Welcome back. There was horror and pandemonium in the French capital last Friday night when near simultaneous attacks on the city killed at least 127 people and wounded more than 180 others. President Francois Hollande, who promised to wage a merciless fight against terrorists, says the attacks were an act of war organized by the Islamic State. The targets included bars, restaurants and concerts and a high-profile football match. ISIS claimed responsibility for the attacks. Il y a plusieurs dizaines de tués. French President Francois Hollande blessés. declared a state of emergency across France and ordered the closure of national borders following a spate of attacks in Paris on Friday evening in which hundreds were killed. France was rocked by multiple near simultaneous attacks on entertainment sites around Paris. At least two explosions were heard near the Stade de la France National Stadium, where a France-Germany friendly football match was being played, attended by President Hollande. Immediately after the horrific attacks, reactions began pouring in. Uh, once again, we've seen an outrageous attempt to terrorize innocent civilians. This is an attack not just on Paris. It's an attack not just on the people of France, uh, but this is an attack on all of humanity and the universal values that we share. Uh, we stand prepared and ready to provide whatever assistance that the government and the people of France need to respond. The events in Paris are the worst act of violence in France since the Second World War, the worst terrorist attack in Europe for a decade a horrifying and sickening attack. Our hearts go out to the French people and to all those who lost loved ones. Today, the British and French people stand together as we have so often before in our history when confronted by evil. Shocked, but resolute. In sorrow, but unbowed. My message to the French people is simple. Nous sommes solidaires avec vous. Nous sommes tous ensemble. We stand with you, united. The German Chancellor also said that Germany would help France to hunt down the perpetrators of the Paris attacks and that Berlin would join battle with a fight against terrorism with France to defend European values. In Asia, the Prime Minister of Japan and South Korea also condemned the attack, saying they are shocked and saddened by the violence. The apparently coordinated gun and bomb attacks came as the country, a founder member of the US-led coalition waging airstrikes against Islamic State fighters in Syria and Iraq, was on high alert for terrorist attacks ahead of a global climate conference that opens later this month. According to President François Hollande, the Paris attacks were an act of war organized by the Islamic State. The group says the attack was in response to the airstrikes carried out by the U.S.-led coalition in Syria and Iraq. Away from terrorism, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Monday, November the 9th, affirmed his commitment to a two-state solution with Palestinians to achieve peace in the Middle East during a meeting with President Barack Obama in Washington, D.C., in which the two leaders sought to smooth over differences on Iran. In Myanmar, democracy icon Osan Suu Kyi's National League for Democracy has won a majority in parliament. Over the past few days, results from the country's first free general elections in 25 years have slowly been trickling in. But the latest announcement of seats officially pushes the party over the threshold, allowing them to form a government and choose their own president. But a quarter of seats were given uncontested to the military, meaning it remains hugely influential. Meanwhile, under the constitution, Ms. Suu Kyi cannot become president as it specifically bars anyone whose children were born foreign nationals from holding the job. Both her sons were born British. The European Union says it will give Africa 1.9 billion euros to tackle illegal migration. This is one of the measures European and African leaders agreed on at a meeting in Malta. Leaders of the European Union met their African counterparts in Malta on Wednesday, November the 11th, 
and Thursday, November the 12th, to discuss ways to reduce the flow of migrants crossing the Mediterranean from the African continent. The summit inside the 16th century fortifications at Valletta was conceived six months ago after the sinking of a boat from Libya with the loss of over 800 lives forced EU governments to acknowledge migrants' desperation and step up naval rescue missions. The African Union chairperson Uncle Sazana Dlamini Zuma also said Europe must not close its doors. The EU-Africa summit agreed to launch a trust fund for Africa based on 1.8 billion euros to combat migration as well as aid. EU leaders offered African countries better access to Europe in return for help curbing chaotic migration and promises to take back more of those whom Europe expels. A 17-page action plan sets out dozens of initiatives. Many build on decades of stuttering cooperation between the African continent and wealthy but aging Europe. The elements of the action plan are designed to one, address the root causes of migration, two, enhance cooperation on legal migration and mobility, three, reinforce protection of displaced persons, four, prevent and fight against migrant smuggling and trafficking in human beings, and five, advance on returning persons that are not entitled to stay in Europe. Senegalese President Macky Sall told reporters he was pleased with the outcome of the summit, but said that if Africa tackled bad governance and corruption, it would no longer need financial support. It's precisely by acting around this question that Africa will have enough resources. We could absolutely do without aid if we take tax evasion and the fraudulent flow of resources from Africa, which is estimated at more than $60 billion a year. Taking back just 17% of these resources would enable us to avoid having to call for public development aid and would even enable us to completely reimburse our debts. Earlier, the European Commission said it expects some 3 million asylum seekers to arrive in the EU by 2017 and that if they are integrated into the workforce, they will boost the EU's economic output and even improve public finances in the longer term.